welcome back to another video let's go and explore Kid Whaley Castle in West Wales Welcome to the enchanting world of medieval history. Today we're diving deep into the story of one of Wales' most iconic fortresses, Kid Whaley Castle. Nestled on the banks of the River Gwendraith in the picturesque town of Kid Whaley, this castle has witnessed centuries of conflict, conquest and change. Join us as we unravel the fascinating history of Kid Whaley Castle, a stronghold that has stood the test of time for nearly a millennium. The history of Kid Whaley Castle begins in the 12th century. During a period of intense military and political struggle in Wales, the original structure was a Mott and Bailey castle built by Roger Bishop of Salisbury around 1106. As one of King Henry's the first most trusted advisors, Bishop Roger sought to establish normal control over South Wales by constructing a series of fortifications with Kid Whaley being a key strategic point. The location of Kid Whaley was no accident. Perched on a ridge overlooking the Gwendraith estuary, it commanded views of the surrounding landscape, making it an ideal spot to monitor and control movements in and out of the region. This early wooden fortress was a symbol of Norman power in a land that was fiercely contested by the native Welsh. The Mott and Bailey design, common during this period, featured a wooden keep atop a raised earth mound or mott, with an enclosed courtyard or bailey below. This design was practical and could be erective relatively quickly, providing immediate defence against the frequent Welsh uprisings. But as history would soon show, wooden defences were not enough to ensure lasting control. Dungeons. 
steps down in the dungeon. <laughs> Not very clever. Not sure if you can see that, but uh, these are the murder holes in the gatehouse. Every room so far has a lovely fireplace as well. Let's go down the second dungeon. steps.
And there you go, dug gem number two. All right, let's get the difficult bit over. These steps are pretty treacherous. Here's another chamber. And there's the well. And all these chambers are just in the gatehouse. This is quite a big old castle. The early 12th century was marked by a series of Welsh rebellions against Norman rule. The lords of Kidwelly were constantly under threat from local Welsh princes, most notably Gruffith Apris, who led a fierce campaign to reclaim lands seized by the Normans. In response to these uprisings, the Normans began to replace the wooden structures with more durable stone fortifications. By the mid-12th century, Kidwelly Castle had been rebuilt in stone, transforming it into the formidable stronghold that still stands today. The new design included a curtain wall, a gatehouse, and a central keep, making it much more resilient to attack. This transformation from wood to stone was not just about durability, it was also a statement of Norman dominance. The imposing stone walls, such of which were up to nine feet thick, were a clear message to the Welsh that the Normans were here to stay.
The 13th century brought new challenges for Cridwelly Castle. During the reign of Llewellyn the Great, Prince of Gwynedd, Wales experienced a resurgence of native power. Llewellyn sought to unite the Welsh princes against the encroaching Norman lords, and in 1231, Kidwelly Castle came under attack once again. Despite the formidable stone defences, the castle was captured by Llewellyn's forces, only to be recaptured by the Normans shortly after. This period of conflict underscored the strategic importance of Kidwelly, prompting further fortifications and expansions. These are the murder holes. So they dropped some boiling oil on you as you came through the gate here. Yeah? Let's take a look out on the castle walls. It is a bit windy today, so apologies for the audio. Thank you. 
And here we are in the kitchen. There's some massive bread ovens in here. There you go. Got a few loaves in there. Just give you a 360 of the kitchen. Over the next few decades, the castle saw significant enhancements. The addition of the powerful gatehouse, the enlargement of the inner ward, and the construction of additional towers all contributed to making Kidwili one of the most advanced fortresses of its time. The design reflected the latest in military architecture with features like arrow slits, murder holes, and port calluses becoming standard. The late 13th and 14th centuries marked a new chapter in the castle's history, as it came under the control of the de Chaworth family, followed by the powerful Stafford dynasty. These noble families played a crucial role in shaping the castle's legacy, overseeing both its defence and its domestic affairs. Under their stewardship, Kidwili Castle became more than just a military stronghold. It was also a hub of administration and local governance. The castle's Great Hall, once a place for knights and soldiers, now hosted banquets, legal proceedings and other important functions. It was during this time that the castle began to develop into the structure we recognize today, with its grand halls, residential quarters, and intricate fortifications.
jelly babies with you? Yes, I brought my jelly babies oh, with I'm gonna me. Take some of those. Yeah, but my alarm hasn't gone off yet, and that means I haven't got my bed. The Stafford family's wealth and influence allowed for further improvement to the castle's defences. The outer ward was expanded and the gatehouse was reinforced, reflecting the ongoing need for security in a region still marked by political uncertainty. The Wars of the Roses in the 15th century had a profound impact on Kid Bailey Castle as England was plunged into a brutal civil war between the houses of Lancaster and York. The castle's fortunes waned. It was held for the Lancastrians, but as the tide of war turned, its strategic importance diminished. Slow I've been expecting you. Good day, Fizz. I'm sure you know why I'm here. I fear bad news travels quicker than your fastest horse, my lord. Riz Grieg, my friend. I will forever be grateful for your support during my successful campaign into these lands some five years ago. One by one, the English castles fell as we marched to victory. And when I asked that you capture this castle, you did exactly that, like a true warrior. Your father would have been proud. Uh, yes, spare me your flattery. Pray, tell me your news. It is hard for me to say, but... The treaty I sealed with King Henry at Worcester demands you hand this castle to Avis de Londres, the English heiress of Kidwelly. You're willing to give my castle to the same land-grabbing lords we fought so furiously against? Ha! My, how your politics have changed since you started taking orders from that English king. Sacrifices must be made. But the treaty with King Henry will protect us all. I noticed you won't be losing any lands in Gwynedd. The only thing the treaty protects is your own interests. You're nothing but a puppet of the king. Hold your tongue, sir, lest I cut it out. I understand you're upset, but your disrespect tests my patience. You must give up the castle for the greater good of Wales. You should not let your own petty feelings cloud your view. No, my ambition. Petty feelings? These people murdered my grandmother. They, they, they beheaded her just a stone's throw from these walls. Years later, my father, the mighty Lord Rees, Prince of De Haybarth, and the English King's representative in Wales, fell to their treachery and weasel words. Don't fool yourself into thinking they won't betray you too. That's a risk I'll take. Now, shall we do this the easy way or the hard way? Give the wretched castle back to those incomers. And what else will you take from me? Just a year past, you forced me to surrender my lands in Gower to John de Brous, your son-in-law. Oh, if this is how you treat your allies, I feel sorry for your enemies. These decisions lie heavy on my heart. But I'm certain in time we will fight again. Let us begin arrangements for your withdrawal. Following the end of the conflict, Kidwelly Castle began to fall into decline. The once mighty fortress, which had withstood centuries of warfare, was no longer a focal point of military strategy. 
By the 16th century, it had come, become largely redundant. Its halls and towers slowly succumb in to the passage of time. By the 19th century, Kidwelly Castle was in a state of ruin. However, its historical significance was not forgotten. The castle became a subject of interest for hi historians and artists alike, who were drawn to its romantic ruins and the stories they told of a bygone era. This is the North Gate House. Here's the main oven of the castle. The 20th century saw a renewed interest in preserving Kidwelly Castle. Restoration efforts began in earnest, aimed at stabilising the ruins and preserving this piece of Welsh heritage for future generations. Today the castle is managed by Cadw, the Welsh Government's historic environment service, and is open to the public as a site of historical interest. Here we are in the later kitchen.
Visitors to Kidwaley Castle today can walk through nearly 900 years of history, exploring the remains of its great halls, climbing its towers and imagining what life was like within its walls. The castle stands as a testament to the rich and turbulent history of Wales, a symbol of the resilience and strength of the people who lived and fought here. As the sun sets over Kidwaley Castle, it's easy to feel the weight of history in its ancient stones. From its humble beginnings as a wooden fortress to its transformation into a mighty stone stronghold, Kidwaley has played a pivotal role in the story of Wales. Whether you're a history enthusiast, a lover of medieval architecture, or simply someone who appreciates a good story, Kidwaley Castle has something to offer. And there it is, Kidwaley Castle. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget, like, subscribe, comment, and we'll see you all in the next one. So this is the memorial of one of Wales' greatest heroines. In 1136, she led a Welsh army against Marcia, Lord Maurice de Londres. The battle took place nearby, and despite her bravery, Gwen Llian was captured and beheaded. And that's the monument to Gwen Llian. And if you're ever down West Wales or Carmarthen or Kidwaley, this place is a definitely worth a visit. <laughs>